Here in Clemson, South Carolina, it's the 2019 Pro Day. Nearly two dozen former Tigers showing NFL scouts what they have for the next level. Hi, everybody, and welcome in with Tim Beret, Pete Yannity, with you at Clemson's indoor facility, getting ready to see a variety of different exercises. One final time, really, for these guys, in the most uh, cases, to establish what they can do on the next level in the NFL. Yeah, it's a big day for a lot of guys. I've been here for many years and been here for many combines. I think back to a guy named Tyler Shatley, who was kind of an unknown offensive lineman, did 47 reps in the 225, and, you know, he's still playing in the NFL. This was a big day for him. Probably going to be the same case for some other Tigers today. We have certainly see guys not only here over the years but all over the country maybe move up a notch or around in the draft because of what they do on their pro day. And as we said, we have roughly two dozen, about 25 guys who will be showing the scouts what they've done. Tim, on that list, about 10 of those players were up in Indianapolis within the past month at the NFL Combine. I was impressed with the fact that several of them, based on the ratings by the scouts coming out of the Combine, had immediate impact player next to their name. Yeah, we had actually 11 go, which is the most in Clemson history to one combine. Austin Bryan did not participate, so uh, only 10 participated. But, yeah, you got the three defensive linemen who, you know, have a great chance to be a first-round draft pick. And some people think Trayvon Mullen has a chance to jump in there also. And no doubt those defensive linemen getting a lot of attention to those scouts today. And for those who have tuned in to our telecast today, and we'll be showing you various things from a 40-yard dash to strength competitions. We've already gotten started with a couple of the jumping routines, and the guys are getting measured on those right now. When we come back, the 40-yard dash is among the things we'll see when we come back to Clemson's Pro Day. Sarah's last. Mitch Hyatt, the left tackle who really could use, I think, a good Pro Day, Tim, to enhance and, and the strength area later on in our show will, will be a big part for him. Of course, he's the nephew of Dan Benish, who was starter on Clemson's national championship team in 1981. First Clemson offensive lineman since Stacey Seegers in 1993 to be a consensus first-team All-American. Yeah, and he was a, a two-time All-American se selection uh, over his career. Four-year starter. You see very few four-year starters at left tackle. His uncle being Herschel, Herschel Walker, Walker, who I would suppose in the annual rivalry game of the Peach State might have scored a time or two as yes. well Yes. against the Yellow Jackets. And Richard, a tight end, did not go to the combine, 6'3", 255. There are so many players, as we talked about at the outset of the telecast, who really could move up and suddenly at least get to the late rounds of the draft or the middle that maybe you look at their college numbers, they don't jump off the page because they served a certain role. Right. I think Mylon Richard is one of those guys. Absolutely. He's a great athletic ability. He also has the swankiest shoes of anybody here today. Almost looks like if he runs too fast, they might become a blaze. Been waiting all day to use that girl that. Native of Savannah, Georgia, again, lanky at 6'3", 255. Yeah. He had 25 receptions for 269 yards and a couple of touchdowns during his Clemson career. We get Justin Falsinelli now, really came on as a terrific center for the Tigers, two-time All-ACC player. Did a great job against Alabama as the entire offensive line did in that national championship game. Yeah, he was one of those late career impact players his last two years. And keep in mind, he was earning his MBA off campus. So he had to have that commitment as well, but he'll leave Clemson in yeah, he would have great to shape drive over to Greenville every day to take uh, classes there. He missed, he would actually miss some workout time during the year. So Falsinelli hopes to make it happen in the NFL. He could do very well simply in the business world based on the credentials yeah. he's established already. <laughs> Second father team, has all business, ACC. Father has a business degree from Notre Dame, which uh, made for an interesting day for him in the Cotton Bowl this year, playing against his father's team. And they'll place the bar with 27. And we've heard the uh, NFL scout with the Raiders, who's monitoring the bench press, yell that out. So we're pretty certain that's the official number. And obviously, you can count along as you tune in. Trevion Thompson, again, one of those interesting players here at this pro day because as a receiver, he was able to serve a certain role career 53 receptions couple of touchdowns but 
maybe one of those players who can do something on special teams that will really open the eyes of the NFL scouts. Dabo would refer to him as a putty guy when it came because he could put him, put him into just any of the three wide receiver positions. He knew the assignments for every position. It's really funny as you can see to the right side of your screen his teammates are e extending as much emotion and energy as he is 16 that's really good that's a big number for yeah. someone as a wide receiver and again it translates into what you want to see from a special team standpoint the Davis twins are participating here today as well and you see them getting loose Christian Wilkins who did not do the cone drill at the combine well the very affable Clemson defensive lineman the fabulous player both on the field in the classroom and off the field about to step in front of our cameras for the first time today. Yeah, this was uh, he didn't do this event or the 60 at the combine. He did the 40 yard dash at the combine. I don't believe we saw him doing the 40 yard dash. Today. No, I think so, he told me he was going to stay by his time at the combine, which a lot of guys did. He did a 5.04 is on demand. Back at Clemson's Poe Indoor Facility, the 2019 Tigers Pro Day with roughly 25 Tigers trying to show their merit for the next level with Tim Bure, Pete Gannity back with you. So we've gotten one phase done of Pro Day, getting ready for the individual position drills, but we saw the various strength and agility. I, I think a guy like Trevion Thompson is doing himself favors today. We obviously know the players that are front and center in the scouts' minds, but a guy like Thompson and others have that opportunity to move up today. Yeah, do, we don't have all the, uh, the the data with this exact data, but certainly from the eye test standpoint, I'd have to I agree with you. Trayvon was a guy who's a very consistent player. Actually played, ended up playing more games than any wide receiver in Clemson history, even more than than Hunter uh, Renfro. Very consistent. Would get us one or two catches a game. And you know, comparing to Jerron Brown, who's had a nice six-year career in the NFL, Jerron Brown made strides at this day after his senior year. I also like the work we've seen out of someone like Trey Lamar, who went to the combine. But one of those players who maybe comes away from there without a the higher projection that he wanted an opportunity. I think he's done some good things. So yeah, I think so. I, I was with him just when he did the vertical jump and he really showed some explosiveness at a 34 and a half inch inch vertical jump. We know he's got the speed. He's got he's got the strength. Uh, so I think this has been a big day for him too. But whereas all that was perhaps a round of appetizers, we now move into the main dining room, the position drills, starting out with the defensive lineman. And suffice it to say, we've got some prime rib available for the viewers <laughs> in this next segment. I don't know how to top that, but uh, but anyway, you're right. We've got some great def defensive line. I think they're all going to go through the uh, through the workout, and uh, you know, we've got three guys who a lot of people think could be first round draft picks. Um, and then you know you got Austin Bryant. And even uh, Huggy Bear, so uh, who I think has done done pretty well today. As Dabo Sweeney joins us, great group of guys, talented group of guys, and again, this today another chapter. Yeah, no doubt, and and uh, I think we're going to have maybe for sure 10 or 11 drafted, and and probably another four or five that'll get into camp. So probably 15, 16 guys get into camps. And at the end of the day, it's about these guys making a roster and fulfilling a dream of getting a chance to play pro football and. Uh, Travion is an example of like a lot of these guys that we've had. I mean, he's been unbelievably impressive today. He, he, the Eldrew might have been the fastest time if he had been at the combine. Uh, so he, he's going to make it. I mean, he's Jerron Brown. He's Adam Humphreys. I mean, he's we could go on and on and on of guys, but uh, he'll have a chance based on what he did today to definitely get in, in camp or be drafted, and and he'll make it. I don't have any doubt about it. Uh, he, Arteva, Scott, those type of guys, they stick. Along those lines, the you never know. You know, you had a guy come here about eight years ago who wasn't the most heralded in his recruiting class, had a real good career, wasn't drafted in the NFL in 2015. Pretty good little run there down in Tampa Bay as an undrafted free agent. The other day, his name showed up in the transactions, Adam Humphreys, and a great example of having the, the want to to go with the talent. Well, and a great example, too, that, that – it's so much more than the measurables. I mean, you know, and I can scream to the top of my lungs, but at the end of the day, you know, it just you 
people got to go show it. I mean, Hunter Renfro is the most average looking person you'll ever see, but he is Superman on a football field. That's what makes this game great. Uh, Adam Humphreys is that way. And, uh, and I told Adam, I was like, you're not going to wow anybody out of combine. And people m miss on that because, you know, you get so enamored with potential. I'm more focused on performance. And Adam always performed. And uh, not only was he undrafted, he didn't even get a free agent contract. He had to try out uh, to get a free agent contract and kind of made it through the tryout. And, you know, now he's making $9 million a year and <laughs> $20 million guaranteed, you know, but that came through performance. And so it just also shows that it's not, it's not where you start. You know, sometimes a guy goes in high and fizzles out. Sometimes a guy may go in low and becomes an all pro. Uh, or plays for 10 years or so. So there's a lot that goes into it. But at the end of the day, having the, the intangibles to go with the, with, the, with the ability to play the game, that's what, uh, what's what it's all about. And we got several guys in this group that I think will have a more than fair shot uh, to make it at the next level. So the defensive backs, Mark Fields and a couple of his compatriots. Here's Cam Scott, former walk-on. And Trayvon Mullen. There's Mike Reed, uh, obviously a proud position coach watching as the defensive backs that he worked with and helped develop in the Clemson program go through. And, of course, the NFL memory for Mike Reed, a very unique one, and that in 1995, he was Mr. Irrelevant, the very last player taken in the NFL draft that year by the Carolina Panthers. So before he ever came to coach at Clemson, he actually played for the Panthers in Death Valley, and he told Dabo a story back this summer when they were talking about it that uh, he had to tell his grandma that Mr. Irrelevant was an okay thing. He'd never heard of it, but being Mr. Irrelevant in the 1995 NFL draft was a uh, actually a distinction for Mike Reed, and he obviously turned his playing days into a very successful career as an assistant coach. Been on Dabo Sweeney's staff now for nearly a decade and has done a fine job, and again, developing the likes of Trayvon Mullen and Mark Fields and other defensive backs who have been drafted before them out of this Clemson defensive secondary. But how do you like that? A Mr. Relvin who uniquely, when he played in Death Valley in 1995, one of his takeaways was the crown on the field, which he wasn't used to having in his playing days at Boston College and obviously in other NFL stadiums. He says John Elway once zipped a ball in a preseason game on that crown. And because Elway was basically throwing downhill, he said, you know, it was like a 95 mile an hour fastball coming in as a uh, as a batter. If you are lucky enough to ever witness this, you will not forget the grandest entrance in sports. 15 schools, one network. The ACC network is going linear beginning in August of 2019. August 22nd is the network launch. And of course, as you may know, August 29th in Death Valley, the first really premium event on the new ACC network. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets, the Clemson Tigers will open up the 2019 season. That should be a lot of fun to watch that and so much more as the ACC network arrives come August. We invite you to check with your local cable or satellite or television provider as to how you can get the ACC network. So we transition from the guys used to defending the pass to those who will now try to make a living at the next level catching the pass. And that includes our first look at Hunter Renfro today. Many stories have been written on pro days just like this over the years. We shall see how the individuals you saw working out for the NFL scouts will fare come draft time and what will happen in their futures relative to the NFL. We saw the ninjas performing. Dabo Sweeney had to be proud as he welcomed some past players back now in NFL roles and Hunter Renfro looking to get himself a good place in the draft. It has been a pleasure once again, my friend Tim Beret. And on behalf of Tim and our fine crew, and special thanks to Ashley Pendergast helping us produce on the sidelines. Pete Anity saying so long from Clemson.